Hi there, and thanks for stopping by. My name is Trolls, and in the video today, we're gonna take a comprehensive look at our new case strings. Case means concert aleatoric solo effects. And in this particular video, we're gonna go through the string collection, but we also have a brass and a woodwind collection coming shortly. So we have all the individual orchestral effects, both for strings, brass, and woodwinds. And if the word case seems slightly familiar, it's actually because it's the logical extension to our cage collection. Cage is the largest collection of orchestral effects ever done. It's 66 gigabytes of orchestral ensemble effects and it's heavily featured in movies like Interstellar and games like Overwatch and many different places. But in regards to case here, it's sort of the logical extension to the ensemble effects, but focused on solar effects. And in many ways, it's symmetrical to our cage collection and the two really work well together, but this has a way more intimate sound because you're listening essentially to one or two instruments playing individually. And one of the unique things about our case strings here is that we have six different microphones. We got our mix, our room, mid, then we got close, and then we got spot one and spot two. And spot one and spot two actually means that you got two different instruments. So in essence, you have one violin player playing spot one and you have another one playing spot two. So if you ever want like a very, very local sound of just one instrument, you can do that. But in terms of the room mics here, the close, the mid room and the mix, they're actually playing both of the effects together. And in the video today, um, I'm just gonna go through a ride of the presets, both for violin, viola, cellos and basses. And this library alone is over 14,000 effects samples. So there's an enormous amount of content and um, I'll be scattering the surface of all that today. Um, I'll be taking you through all the individual patches here and just give you a little taster of what they can do. And when I say one individual patch, keep in mind that it actually contains multiple articulations inside of it, which each contains multiple samples. So there's an enormous amount of content in the library, but why don't we just get started here? Um, I'm gonna start with the violins, then we'll migrate to violas and then cellos and then basses and just give you a feel for what this library can do. I'm also gonna be fiddling around with the user interface here. There's obviously a lot of unique things you can do, whether it's stacking different articulations together here, whether it's using all the features up here, filter modulation, type of filters here. You got the microphone positions, gate features. We have textual convolution delay down here with a variety of things you can do. Uh, we also got our chaos effects here on the back side. So there's a lot to show you, but uh, instead of talking so much, let's just get right into it. Uh, let's start here with the Gliss Low for violence. All right, let me play a little round with the grudge here and try to do a little bit of effects here in real time so you can see how easy it actually is to really mangle the sound and make it into something entirely different. Thank you. 
So, you know, the pathway to darkness is uh, plentiful in this library. Uh, let's listen to another Gliss articulation. So we're just listening to the Gliss low. This is the Gliss medium. Aren't they cool? Uh, let me try to demonstrate the individual microphone positions here and pay close attention to spot mic 1 and spot mic 2, which represents each of the individual instruments in the articulation here. So you have two different players here. So the spots are awesome if you really want to dial in the sound and get that much more intimate sound of the individual player. Let's also listen a little bit to the Gliss shorts here for violence. Awesome for that side of glissando right into a boom signal, boom, that kind of style. Uh, let's also listen a little bit to the hits. Um, obviously, a lot of these articulations are designed to be used together. So, for example, if you imagine the previous one we had where it goes, you might want to do a sound like that and go like, and then immediately into something like. Let me go through some of the different um, hits here. And moving on here to the pulses, these are awesome as well. So pulses of violence. And they can almost be used kind of percussively. Let me take the shadow one here and then try to do a little bit of effects work on it. So if we turn on the panorama here, you can hear the sound gets a lot wider. Uh, the pitch envelope here can be fun. Uh, you'll make the sound bend more. Do that one here. Then you can t turn the gator on, even though it's short, but um, if you turn the pitch down, it's going to get longer. And you can turn the speed up. It's all tempo synced. Right? It's pretty fast how much you can change the sound. Um, add a little bit of our textual convolution delay here. This one is really interesting as well. You can generate some fabulous results with it. That's how quickly you can do it. You can also click the stack function here and start blending different articulations together. So let's just do it with the bow hits um, and the shutter 2 here and listen to what it sounds like. Ha 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 
So you know, just with a couple of clicks, I've completely mangled the sound. And the idea with our new user interface here is really to give you the options to do something as quickly as I just did it. This is obviously in real time. I'm just sitting and clicking a couple of buttons and all of a sudden you have a brand new sound. So you don't have to go in and fiddle a variety of different parameters to get something special. It's actually right on the keys. Just having fun is all here to go. And if you ever want to go deeper, you go into the back side of things here and start adding some chaos effects to it as well and go really crazy. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, you have a completely different sound. That's how quick it is to use. And that's really the logic behind our new user interface here. Obviously we're using this variety of libraries, but it really lends itself well to something like case because we're already in the world of crazy effects and textures. And, and now all of a sudden you have all the effects at your fingertips. Um, another great thing, uh, and I'll demonstrate that here with the textures, is also the ability to randomize. Um, but let me just um, play uh, the articulations first here, and then I'll show you how you can randomize the effects, both the guys down here called our front-faced effects, but also the guys up here. You can do a lot of crazy things if it wasn't crazy enough already. That's like psycho on steroids. And can I just say, I love Bates Motel, by the way. Chris Bacon did an enormously great job on the soundtrack for that. This is sort of in that vein of things. Uh, let's listen to Sickening as well. All right, let me just stay right there with that one. Um, I was talking a little bit about the randomizer. So let me randomize these parameters up here first, and then I'll randomize down here. So just with two clicks, something dramatic is gonna happen. Let me try here. You click this uh, question mark down here. All right, got a little more nasty. Let's try um, to randomize the front face effects down here. Click the question mark and boom. I mean, what is going on? It almost sounds like some kind of crazy Sue or something. All right, so let's say that was a little too much. You just want to clean up the interface again. You just click this uh, little icon down here and everything goes back and it's recycled back to its core condition. Let's try the Pete's cars and the grind as well. All right, so that was a little taster of what you can do with the violins. Let's also go in and check out the violas. And obviously the articulations in the library are symmetrical, so you can do similar things. So when you get the glissandos for violins, you're also gonna have glissandos for violas. And speaking of glissandos, let's uh, try to listen to these glissando longs.
And as you can see, I'm playing multiple notes together. Uh, one of the beautiful things about this library is that you have the ability to really, really go individual if you want. So let's listen to this just on an individual player basis on the spot one. And if you want the other player, you go spot two. And if you want both of them together, but very, very close mic, you select close. But you can also start clustering, so play people together, so... So it's awesome because you can go from individual player and then sort of to two players and then start clustering together if you want. You can obviously also cluster the individual players if you want to do that. Isn't it great? I mean, this is all real time. What is going on? And this question mark up here is great because it allows you to do uh, randomization of the field of modulation too. Let's listen to the glissando medium here for the violas. And the short glissandos. And it's funny, I'm realizing how little I'm actually demonstrating of the library. Um, obviously, there's over 14,000 effect samples in it, so I can only cover so much. But if you look at the keyboard down here, how many samples you actually got um, under each of the individual articulations here, there's a staggering amount. And obviously, you have, I think we have like 26 patches in total and 96 different sub articulations here. So, you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, let's listen to the viola hits as well. and some of the pulses for violas. This one is awesome. It reminds me a little bit about um, sort of a clockwork like motion. Um, these can be great for sort of percussive, uh, non tonal accentuation um, in a piece if you really need something that follows uh, your beat in a sort of a non tonal, more percussive fashion.
And let me wrap up um, the violas here um, by listening to the textures too. This one is a great example to listen to the two individual players here um, because they're playing such different things. Let's listen to spot one and then spot two on the same articulation. All right, let me just mess this one up. And as always, one of the things I really like to do is to assign the front face effects here to my keyboard. So let's say I want to control the mix of the gate here. I just right click on it here, learn CC MIDI automation and um, just move any kind of controller on my keyboard. This is my mod wheel right now. And all of a sudden I have full control over the gate. Let's say we want to do the same, uh, for example, for the pitch here. So I'm going to assign that as well. So you can see they're moving together right now. It's going to get crazy. Let me also do that um, here on the form or textual convolution delay. So you got the so you got the gator, you got the pitch, and you got the convolution reverb all being modulated on the mod wheel. And you can really hear that convolution sort of sticking out in the end. Form is amazing because it's not just that it's a convolution reverb. We actually made a really deep selection of specific tempo sync convolution delays as well. So you get the texture of the convolution on top of your normal effects. And that's what really creates these crazy, crazy things. So really try to play around with it if you want to get deeper into, you know, just choose some random kind of impulse here and just go crazy on it. For example, like this. You know, it almost becomes like a sort of beautiful ambient text right now. See how you can hear it? So you're getting both the delay of the sound, but also the delay of the convolution together here. That's why it's so awesome to use for really mangling and creating these new type of sound designs. But let's uh, clean up this experiment here. I'm just going to click the recycling icon here and up here, and we're back to normal. And uh, let's uh, continue through um, the viola textures. All right, I gotta take that one as well. Uh, let's go a little bit crazy on the effects. This one is just too interesting not to mess up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's continue over here to the cellos as well, starting with the glissando, just like we did for the violins and violas. some cello hits. Ah, that's a cool sound. It's gonna sound great if we down tune it. Let me try. All right, let me uh, <laughs> clean up here. Uh, let's continue here with the bliss down. Mm -hmm. 
and also uh, some of the cello textures here. And uh, let me just play through some of these guys here and then I'm gonna use the stacking icon after that uh, to show you how you can combine any articulation you possibly want. And this is great when you have a lot of diversity in the articulations. <laughs> And then you just click the stacking icon here and you can stack as many articulations as you want. Uh, let me just try a couple of them here. And the stacking function is great because it sort of takes you out of the local sound and really get more of an ensemble sound, but you can really control it. You can also stack, for example, let's just take um, spot mic one here, but stack different articulations together. So this is just one player, but playing four different things. And let me try that for spot two here, playing the exact same thing. We can also do it for the close mics here. Um, let's take another selection here. Uh, let's take uh, Revenge 2 and uh, Chatter and Slap. You know, all of a sudden we are like kind of underwaters. You know, it's almost endless. Uh, we also have another bank here of cello textures. And last but not least, we also got the bass section. These are really fun to play with as well, particularly once you start playing around with the tuning. Uh, but let's start here with listening to the bass glissando longs.
And when I said about playing with the tuning, uh, let me just take this first one here, very soft, and uh, let's start to mangle a little bit. Almost sounds like wolves howling in like slow motion. Right? Uh, let's go on uh, and look at the bass's short glissandos here. And the bass's hits. Almost sounds like a, when you had a liner at school. Uh, let me try to tune that down. Cool, you know, it just shows you how quickly you can do sound design as well. I don't know if um, I would say that was like traditional uh, music instrument, but it definitely had like a unique quality to it. Uh, let's listen to the bass pulses too. Base textures one, which contains uh, just a humble 12 different presets that each have multiple samples, and we also have a preset two. But let me show you one here.
All right, hold it right there. Let's uh, <laughs> let me try to go nuts on the effects on that one. That's just too interesting. Uh, particularly when things have like small details like this. And um, for me, that is just a, a bonus content in terms of really pushing stuff. Uh, let me try to mangle it. You know, that one is cool because for me, it um, it actually has a little bit of that delay. It almost like, um, more like a sort of Picasso texture. Who would have known that was basses back in the day? Another cool thing is that because we have these effects right now, they're all applied to whatever I'm doing up here. So let's say I take this uh, Eerie Bends and combine it with the Bow Drops here. You still got, you still got the effects running here. And you can go crazy in the pitch envelope here, it's gonna make it drop. And then you can go instantly in here and change the texture to something else. Let's try another. But uh, let me just uh, clean up the effects here and uh, continue the journey into these. Uh, so turn the stack function off here as well. Uh, so back to Eerie Bends in its normal form. But even taking just a single uh, sound like this one and adding some distortion to it. You know, it's so easy just with a couple of clicks to really take the sound somewhere else. Uh, let's listen to the chatter here as well. Alright, and to wrap up the journey, let me also show you just uh, the last bank here of base textures. Again, this library contains over 22 gigabytes losslessly compressed sounds and over 14,000 samples. And I've only scratched the very, very surface. It would take me like days to actually go through all the content here. But I hope this video has given you a little bit of an insight into what you can do with the case strings collection. And as I mentioned earlier, this collection is also going to be followed up both by case brass and case woodwinds that are recorded in similar depth and with the same method in terms of having individual players on the spot mics and four room mics here. But uh, let's wrap it up here with um, the last um, section here of bass textures. And uh, I'm just going to go crazy on the effects here. And um, that'll be that. I have no idea what's going to happen, but uh, that's the fun of it, right?